I was adopted when I was four by a 64-year-old woman, and her name is Gertrude Franklin. I had a rough childhood, uh, you know, had a lot of abandonment issues, didn't know my mother, didn't know my father. So I got into a lot of trouble and, and uh, didn't do well in school. But Gertrude really, really believed in my musical gifts, and so I would take piano lessons once a week. She recycled newspapers and beer cans to pay for my piano lessons. By the grace of God, first album, selling over a million copies. I really believe that it happened because I am a firm believer in the message I preach. Unfortunately, uh, Gertrude died before she heard any of my music ever recorded. So she didn't get a chance to see me get my life together. And I kind of live with that, that chasing the ghost type of energy in my life. Several years ago, um, is I met one of the gentlemen that's an executive at Park Place, and I met him at church. And uh, he was like, man, you ought to come see me one day. Just come hang out with me. And, and so we just really developed a friendship. One thing about music is that you can't have a bunch of musicians playing what they want to play. They have to play what the song demands. So what you don't want to feel is that everybody is playing different notes because it's not a melody. It's not a nice harmony, and it doesn't sound good, nor does it feel good. The star in the room is always the song. And what I love about Park Place is that the star in the room every time you go is always the client. You can tell that they've been rehearsing, that they've been practicing the song. Coming from a past where a lot of things in my childhood were very inconsistent, consistency has been something that I've always strived for. Park Place is my place because they make me feel like a classic song. <laughs>